Most people call this a Marmite watch. Uh, you either love it or you hate it. I'm sort of in the camp of, meh, it's all right. I neither love it nor I hate it. Now, most watch enthusiasts know this watch for, for what it is in its history, uh, dating back to the 60s and how Jack Cousteau was involved in developing it and, you, and he uses it. Um, but for anyone under the age of 30 who's a diver, more likely to see them wear a Sun 2 dive computer. And anyone who's above that age is more likely to be wearing a Seiko or a Citizen uh, watch. But um, when they go diving, they wouldn't be wearing anything like this. Doxa was used by divers back in the 60s and 70s, but you seldom see divers today wear this watch at all. These watches are mainly now for desk divers. The closest this watch is going to get to any water is when you wash your hands. Now the first time I saw one of these uh, doxers was about four years ago when I actually physically saw it. It was at a watch fair. I briefly looked at it and thought, okay, that's the doxer and didn't didn't really jump out to me and I looked at it and then just went on my way. Uh, and then throughout the years that um, went by that it was becoming more and more popular and there was more people posting about it and it still didn't jump out to me that yeah this is a watch I'd want to buy uh, but maybe someday I'd have a look at it and I, I did like it. It's, it. For me it's like it's an ugly beautiful watch. It's a nice watch but it's very ugly. And I like that. I, I like the fact that it's different. So it was it was on my radar, but it wasn't something that I wanted to, oh yes, I must buy this watch. Jump forward a few more years and uh, the dealer that I regularly buy watches from, uh, they contacted me. They said, well, we've got these Doxers in. Uh, would I like to come and have a look at them? Doxer, the way Doxer is, they don't have that many dealers. So I think they must have just got them fairly recently and they wanted to show their customers who've been buying watches from them in the past. So I went down and had a look at it. Uh, that was really the first time I actually spent some proper time with it back when at the watch fair. I just briefly looked at it, held it in my hand. I thought, okay, so this is the real first chance I got to actually hold it in my hand and to to see what it was like and how it felt. And um, I, I did like it. I, I like the fact that it's got this cushioned uh, case. It's very unusual. I do like the history of the watch, even though it's a very broken history. It's not a constant company which was producing watches throughout. There was a big gap in between. Uh, but I like the watch for what it is. I don't really care too much about anything else. It's a nice watch. So I thought, okay, well, how much is it? It was up at uh, £1,780 and no discount. Uh, when I was told that, I thought, wait a minute, you're not going to give anything off that? She goes, nope. Uh, we can't give any discount on this watch whatsoever. It's 1780. Uh, it's on the strap on the stainless steel beads of rice. It's another 40 pounds, which is what 1820. And I just I thought that's really expensive. And one of the reasons why is just a few years before that, I bought this one. Now this I bought from Tudor itself, from a Tudor dealer, brand new, and it cost me, I'm kind of guessing, I can't really remember the exact price, but it was around about £2,000. Now with that I got it on the stainless steel bracelet, I also got the extra leather strap with solid end uh, links, where you don't have any gap when you put the links in, which I think really good. And the good thing about these links is that you can actually use any strap you want, and it works. I also got the NATO strap as well. Uh, so this one has the old ETA movement, which the same as this one. So 1780, no discount, around about 2000 pounds. Yeah, nowadays this one is a lot more expensive. The Tudor is more expensive. It's um, around about 2800, that's retail. Uh, whether or not you'll get some money off that, you probably can, but it does have a different movement. It has a, a well, an in-house movement, I don't know if it's better or worse, it's more expensive definitely to service. So these are quite sought after now because they're quite easy to service and they're going at quite a premium now. So the Doxa to me, I thought, yeah, that's too expensive. Uh, plus, because you're not going to give me any discount and they won't even give any goodies. Nowadays, a lot of um, companies, they don't give that much discount. They will offer you other incentives such as uh, free gifts. Um, I bought a, an, an IWC Portuguese uh, about three years ago, I think it is now. 
and I got a $2,000 leather jacket with it and I got a few other things. I bought a Breitling about two years ago, Breitling Navi Timer, and they gave me, again, another jacket. They gave me a whole bunch of leather straps and, and a bottle of champagne and so on and so on. So they, 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 they do try and make a bit of a, a do about it. This one, it was like, yeah, you pay your seventeen eighty and you walk out the door. And it just, it just, I just didn't want to pay that much for it. It was like too expensive for the, for what it is. And I thought, no, nah, I'll give it a pass and a nice watch, but I'm not going to be, I'm not, I don't want to spend that much, not that much money. Later on that year, um, I actually bought some other watches from the same dealer. So I bought this Oris. I bought the Hamilton uh, Pioneer. And I also bought the Khaki. Now, all, I bought them all together at one time, so I got a really good deal on it. So that's a really nice watch. I do like that one a lot. This one I really, really like. It was amazing. As, as soon as I got it out of the box, it just it just fit me so well. I, I have done a review on this. I've got to do a review on this. Uh, so I'll get down to that afterwards. Now, this is the one that caused all the problems. This one, if you are a regular sub subscriber, you know what all the issues I had with it. But briefly, the first watch broke immediately out of the box. It, I wound it for about two winds and it just clicked and something broke inside, wouldn't work at all. So they exchanged the watch immediately. They gave me a brand new one. That one worked fine for a few weeks and then same problem, uh, something broke inside. And uh, I was like, okay, I, two times it's broken. It didn't give me any confidence in the watch. I was like, okay, if I get another one, what do I do? I don't really want another one because it just didn't feel right. I'm like, I'll be constantly worried. Oh, it's gonna break, it's gonna break. So uh, I thought, okay, well, I can swap it for another watch, some of something else. I don't wanna buy this one. So they got back to me and said, well, remember the Doxers? How about if we do you a deal on the Doxer? So we can uh, work something out. We can put that one towards the doctor. And so I said, okay, well, what's, what's the cost? Come back to me with the, with the price. So later that day, she, uh, she got back to me with the price and it was 1,171 pounds. I think it was sent no, I'll put uh, uh, the invoice up. And I was like, mm, that's okay, okay, I'll, I'll do that. That, that seemed to me, okay, the doctors, I w it was still on my radar of buying. I still, I do like it, I did like it. And it was like, okay, that's, they give me a discount. Fair enough, I'll take it. So I paid the money. Two weeks later, uh, the doctor turned up. And uh, for the unboxing, um, that was really the, the first time I'd seen uh, this one because they had the orange one. Originally, I was gonna get the orange dial one, but uh, I decided not to get the orange because the orange one is the, is the most common. And I didn't want a watch that everyone else has got. They've all got the orange dial. So the other dials I looked at, they didn't have the blue one, so I took a bit of a chance at it. The other dials I didn't like. The black one was like, yeah, I've got plenty of black dial watches before. I don't really want another one. And the other colors just didn't appeal to me. I thought, okay, the blue one's the best one to get. So I got the blue one, and when I did the unboxing, that was really the first time I actually saw the watch. Now, if you saw the watch, it, it comes on this leather, uh, sorry, this rubber strap. Now, you can probably notice I haven't actually cut the rubber strap. This one you've got to cut and fit to your wrist. Now the reason I didn't uh, cut it was I was still very unsure about the watch. So I thought, do I really want to keep it? Um, I, I've had a lot of watches which I've liked at the beginning about the look of, but then when I've been wearing them, I didn't like them. So I thought, okay, don't cut the strap yet. Uh, if I don't like it, I can always sell it on. I wouldn't return it, but there, is, there was a, re a return policy the watch uh, company has. But I thought, well, I'm paying 1100 or something pounds for it. And then I may as well sell it. These actually hold the value really well. So I thought I'll just sell it on and I'll still get 14, 1500 pounds for it. That's what they're actually going for. So I thought it's better not to cut the rubber strap. Um, if I sell it on, I can sell it as a rubber strap complete. If I cut it, it'll be too small and it just sort of devalues it. And I didn't even wear it uh, with this buckle. You can see the buckle still got all of its uh, coverings to stop it from being scratched. I haven't used I've only put the strap back on now just for this video. Um, and I haven't really worn it on this strap. And I, I will cut it now because I'm gonna keep the watch. 
but I just I thought that these rubber straps are really expensive as well. They're at 120 pounds. So if I was going to sell it, I'd have to buy a new strap or somebody would have to buy a new strap. I'd have to deduct that from the price. So it just made more sense not to use it. And plus, I like to change my straps a lot. I, it gives a watch a complete different feel, look to it. It's a bit boring when the same thing day in, day out uh, for weeks on end. So I wear it on other rubber straps, um, a lot of leather straps. Now, a lot of people say a dive watch on a leather strap. Yeah, but... I'm not taking this anywhere near any water anyway. So I think the ammo strap suits uh, this watch really well. Uh, it looks really good on the ammo strap. So I'm wearing it currently on this uh, one piece blue handmade leather strap, uh, which I had made specially for this watch. The blue almost matches. You can't see it uh, too well with the, the lights in the, in the light room, uh, but uh, the dial looks a lot uh, brighter than it actually is. So the following day I got a package from the dealer and um, I just thought they've probably sent me something uh, like a gift or something to do with docks, maybe a hat or a bag or, or something like that. They tend to do things like that. Uh, but to my surprise, this turned up. I was like, why have they sent me the Hamilton watch? Because uh, my thoughts were that I was going to uh, put the money that I put towards this into this watch. And then that's why I'm paying the £1,170 and then they keep this watch but uh, for some reason uh, they didn't do that so I called up the dealer and um, I said my Hamilton watch has turned up and she goes oh yeah they, um, they've uh, they've changed the movement and they have serviced it and she goes is it how's it running I said yeah, it seems to be okay um, I don't know she goes well is any other problems then just let us know and then we will we'll sort it all out because it's still under warranty and I was like do I say anything that what do we do with the with the money? Because I thought what, would, what our deal was, I put the money from the Hamilton to this. I didn't, so I thought, should I just stay dumb? And I did. And I'm sure a lot of people will now say, oh my God, that's terrible. Um, I, should, I should feel bad. Do I feel bad that a multi-million pound company has given me a watch which possibly they shouldn't have done or they've just made a mistake? No, I don't feel sorry whatsoever at all. Uh, the way I look at it is I've paid uh, £230 for this watch and I have paid £1,171 for this watch. So for me, it's just happy days. Now, this watch has really surprised me. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. It's the watch that I've been wearing most often than not over the past few months. It's the first watch which I grab uh, when I wanted to wear a watch over, over the past few months. It's just so comfortable. Now, one of the reasons uh, I think that is, is if you look at the side profile of it, you can see the movement. There's this bulge at the back where the movement is, and that kind of raises the case. So the case is not going to be riding right on the top of your wrist. And also the, the crown is raised up. Now, one of my problems is when I wear watches is I have them really close to the end of my wrist and quite tightly to the end of my wrist. So they, uh, the, dig, the crown digs into the, the top of my wrist or the bottom of my wrist. With this, I've not had that problem because of the, the crown being so high. And also because of the case, it kind of protects it. And it's just the way it curves around, it just fits around my wrist really well. So it's a very, very comfortable watch to wear. I can wear this watch all day without any problems. Now, would I recommend this watch to anybody? Absolutely not. I think it's overpriced for what it is. £1,800 for this watch is just too expensive. I, I just couldn't tell anyone to buy it at that price. If you get a discount, which I would say haggle like hell to get a discount. If they don't, then just walk away. Now the chances are they won't give you a discount nowadays. It's very, very hard to get a discount of, uh, of some watches. It's just too expensive. Now, even at the price that I paid for around about 1200 pounds, it's still right up there. I think it's still quite expensive. Now I can, I don't feel too bad because I can always resell it. As I said earlier, these hold their value quite well. I can sell it for probably 13, 1400 pounds without any problems whatsoever. So I'd still be uh, above uh, what I paid for it. So it wouldn't be an issue. But if I'd paid the rate, retail price for this watch and then I wanted to sell it later on, six months down the line, even 12 months, and I took, took what, 1400 pounds for it? I'm losing 400 pounds. I mean, that's a micro brand watch, which you, you could have just have bought and then thrown away at the end of the year and, and not thought about it. So 
I can't justify the price of this watch. I think it's way overpriced for what it is. And it's not even that well made. I don't think it's that well made at all. Now, the, the strap on it, yeah, the strap is nice and the buckle is nice. This buckle for them to buy is $5 in China. That's it. It's not an expensive buckle. Obviously, they're, they're going to be paying that amount of money for it because they're going to be buying thousands. So if you're going to buy this from a, a retail, it's going to cost you more. The buckle itself is OK. It's not bad. But my problem is the dive extension. It's a great thing to have. Yeah. And you can pull it in, pull it out to make the strap fit your wrist a lot better. But if you look at this, look at the way it wobbles. That's just horrendous. It's just, and it, it just feels and sounds cheap when you pull it in. It's, it's just awful. I think that's just awful. And then the watch itself, I don't think it's finished that well at all. Now, the bezel, let me tell you, list, if you, I don't know if the, the mic will pick it up, but if you listen to the bezel, That sounds and feels like it's made out of plastic. When I, when I first started rotating it, I thought, hey, is that plastic? It just feels like it's gonna drop off any second. It's just awful. I think that's terrible. I've got micro brands, uh, which I've paid three, 400 pounds for, which have got a much better bezel than this. Now, it does, this does line up, but so do they. Their, their bezels all line up as well, so I, I don't see the problem with that. It's just awful. The loom on this, again, it's okay. It's nothing special. Microbrands, again, they make a big push about having really powerful C3 loom on their watches. A lot of these watches are nearly on par with Seiko loom. This loom is bright and then it just fades away. Now, this is a dive watch. Now, dive watches are all big about having really bright loom so you can see them underwater. But I'm not impressed with the loom on this watch at all. It's really not that good at all. The case, the finish on the case is just normal. There's nothing special. The brushing on it is just very light. The side of the, the watch is just uh, polished. There's, there's absolutely nothing special at all about the fit and finish of this watch. It's just nothing. If I was to pay three, 400 pounds for this watch, I'd be happy. If I was to pay more than that, which I did do, £1,200, I think even that's just too high for what this watch is. I do like the watch, but I think it's just too expensive for what it is. Now, going back to my um, back to my Tudor, uh, this one is, what, £1,800. That, that's on the, the, the rubber. If it's on, sorry, and uh, yeah, the, the stainless steel bracelet is 1820 This was 1780 more or less 1800 pounds, let's just call it 1800. Uh, this one, this Tudor, as I said earlier, cost me around about 2000. Yeah, the new ones are 2800. It's a thousand pounds more, but it's a much, much better watch. It's from a much better brand. It's got an in-house movement. This has got the SW200 in there, which is just a 200, sorry, it's a hundred pound movement. It's not even a, sorry, a hundred dollar movement. So it's not really an expensive movement either. The Tudor is a much, much better watch. So if somebody was saying to me, which watch should I buy? Or should I buy this? Should I buy this Doc Doxa? I would say, take a look at some other brands out there because the Doxa is very expensive for what it is. There's so many other watches out there with uh, SW200 movements. I just wouldn't be able to say to somebody, yes, you should buy that watch for that price. I would say to them, try and get it at a, at a cheaper price. I wouldn't buy one secondhand either because if a secondhand one is going for 1,400, 1,500 pounds and a new one is 17, 1,800 pounds, you may as well pay the extra 200 pounds and get a brand new one. I don't see the point of buying secondhand. These are not like they're limited. Uh, I know they're trying to make um, their watches a little bit limited, but you'd have to wait. I waited two weeks. They didn't have this in stock. It took two weeks. I can wait two weeks. You know, it's not if you have to wait like a year, like Rolex and stuff like that. Doxa are trying to push that to to make this watch a bit more 
uh, unique by uh, reducing uh, the availability, but you just have to wait a few weeks, you can get one. I really like this watch, but I just couldn't say to somebody, yes, you should buy it. If you're looking to buy this watch, if you're watching this video to think, should I buy this watch or not? I would say look, look at other watches first. Look at the Tudor. If you don't have the extra thousand pounds, save up a little bit more. Uh, you can probably pick one up. Um, I'm not sure if Tudor are giving discounts. Um, I haven't seen uh, a Tudor uh, retailer for a, a long time. You may be able to get something off. Even if you can't get something off, they will throw in some goodies. Uh, I'm sure they'll give you something which is worth a couple of hundred pounds. I know they'll always, always give you something. I would look at other brands. And if you still wanted this watch, then yeah, buy it. But just be aware, I think you're paying too much for this watch.